Casio have just released what I think is their best G-Shock of 2023. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Today's episode is dedicated to everyone who has made a watch purchase using their heart over their head. But anyway, 2023 marks the 40th anniversary of the G-Shock. And over the last two or three years, I've gone a little bit obsessed with the G-Shock Square. And to mark the 40th anniversary, Casio have been bringing out quite a few limited and special editions. And last week I showed you one, didn't I? Oh, a charred Haribo mess of a G-Shock. But today's episode is all about a reinterpretation of that 1983 DW5000C. I bought it on G-Shock's website. It is now sold out and I paid £269. Yes, yes, yes. It is quite a bit of money. But for me personally, and at the end of the day, for me, that's all that counts. I absolutely love this thing. And for the last three days, I've been wearing nothing other than this watch. But before I show you the watch, let me talk about today's sponsor, who are Watch Crunch. The place where no snobs are allowed, where you can talk everything watches, and nobody else gets bored, because everyone else is into watches. It's a great place to meet new people with the same passions and the hobbies as you. You can post photos, opinions, and follow other watch enthusiasts. In fact, come and follow me. It literally takes five minutes to set up an account. And as soon as you do, you can start posting away. Come on over to Watch Crunch and let's build a better and brighter watch world without the snobbery. Right, let's show you the watch, give you my thoughts at the end, and also find out what my wife thought about this watch for the first time. <laughs> Are you G-Shock 40th anniversary ready? Let's go. Okay, with these 40th anniversary G-Shocks, you get this packaging. It's all cardboard, apart from the little Hessian sort of fabric bag that has the actual watch inside. I said it last week, but I have absolutely no problem with this packaging. I have over nine G-Shock tins at home, which I don't know what to do with. I'm not going to sell my G-Shocks. I'm not a sort of collector that keeps the G-Shocks in the tins or the packaging. Anyway, where's that watch? Oh, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the DW5040PG. Parental guidance is advised. Especially if your kids have got your credit card. But look at this absolute stunner. As soon as you get it in your hands, you can feel the premium materials already. This G-Shock has a stainless steel core. Unlike the basic 5600s or the 5610s, this is at least 25 to 30 grams heavier. And that adds to the premium feel. Casio are not using any old plastic for these G-Shocks. Shocks. It's bio resin that makes these basically a plastic that's been made from castor oil and corn, reducing Casio's CO2 emissions. And I've got to say, I'm all for that as long as that resin feels good. And I've got to tell you, it's twice as good as your regular G-Shock resin. In fact, I'd say it's the same as the GW5000. Really supple rubber, again, adds to that premium feel. So what is unique with this Casio? Okay, for starters, the size of the case. The pushers are gold as well as the screws and as I said before the actual case of this watch is stainless steel. It's gold plated and as you can see the lugs are actually the stainless steel as well. Now what Casio are introducing this year is recrystallized stainless steel. Basically a method to make regular stainless steel three times tougher. From seeing it on the website, I did kind of think that it was going to have a sandpapery feel to it, but it's a nice smooth matte finish, golden buckle and an awesome golden keeper with those four stars on it, each star representing a decade. Now like the very first G-Shock, which had a stainless steel core, it also had a stainless steel screw-in case back and this case back is also the recrystallized stainless steel and I absolutely love this. Time to look at the face and the first thing you notice is that goldy sunburst sunray screen. Something I know they did on the 35th anniversary G-Shock but just not this golden. But it sure does make that screen look so legible. Now just like that original G-Shock inside that awesome red border we have that brick pattern and also at the bottom left in blue we have Project 
Teen Tough, which was the name of Kiko Ibe's team in charge of producing the first G-Shock. Now let's talk about the functions. And this may only take 10 seconds. Remember, this is a reinterpretation of the very first G. And in doing that, this one has the same functions, an alarm, a countdown timer, and a stopwatch. We've got a cool electro-illuminescent backlight, which I love. Casio seem to be rolling back these in a lot of their new watches. And to have it in this one, I'm really chuffed. So the inside features of this watch is where you have that in a fight with your brain and your heart, you know? There's no tough solar, there's no multi-band six, there's no world time. All the upgrades that modern G-Shock squares have are missing in this one. But I've got to be honest and say, I don't care. I love the fact that they've kept this watch stripped down and they weren't tempted to add any extra features on it because let's be fair, it wouldn't have been a true homage to the first one. On my six and a half inch wrist, and this is the one G-Shock that I own that really pops. Okay, maybe my silver one does. <laughs> and my new gold one probably pops as well, but um, proper resin ones I'm talking about. <laughs> I absolutely love the gold accents on this G-Shock. There is an understated premium look to it. It's more blingy than the 5000U, but it's still subtle. As I said before, I will not be keeping this in a box. This will be worn when I'm at work. I'm a tennis coach by day and it will perform and wear just like my other G-Shocks. I have to admit though that that smooth matte finish to the case back on the underside of this watch doesn't half make it feel more comfortable than the shiny polished one on the 5000U. Gets a bit sweaty. Um, could you just click that like button please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. You can buy a basic 5600 for around 70 pounds in the UK, and that will be the same amount of features as this 269 pounds one. Now I don't like to talk about money, and I certainly don't like to talk about investments, but I know for a fact, seeing that these are already sold out, if I was to keep this in good condition for five years, it would go up in value, whereas the basic G-Shock, I definitely get less. So yes, it's an expensive watch. And functionality and features wise, the value isn't there. But materials, exclusivity and everything else, there's a lot of value in here. I've got to be honest, I'm really chuffed that I own this thing. I've not gone the route of the second hand market because these watches are already being sold £200 higher than the retail price. Dirty scalpers. Here it is, my wife's thoughts on the DW5040PG. Haha, <laughs> this one reminds me of Mario. Why are there bricks on the screen? It's all right, I guess. So yes, listen, there are going to be a lot of you out there that go, it's not worth it. I prefer my 5610. G-Shock shouldn't be that expensive. It hasn't got enough features. And that's absolutely fine. If you don't want it, don't buy it. I wanted it. I bought it. I flipping love it. <laughs> Thanks for watching all the way till the end. And if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you check this one out? This show is absolutely incredible. One of my best. It's quite special. Go on, click it, click it, click, click it.